I don't know whether I, I told you the size of the squadron was two troops. Well, let's go back to the, to the formation of the cavalry formation. I don't believe I mentioned that. The uh, troop was made up, as I said, in uh, uh, sets of, of fours, and it had eight sets of fours made up of two. Now, I got that wrong right from the start. Eight sets of fours made a squad. Four squads made a platoon. Uh, four platoons made the troop. A troop usually was uh, somewhere between uh, 140 and 160 men. Two troops comprised a squadron. Two squadrons, a regiment, and uh, of course I say two. The uh, four regiments made the division. <coughs> the uh, squad leader was a corporal and then the platoon leaders were sergeants and they had a first sergeant and of course a stable sergeant and a supply sergeant and a mess sergeant and the, the cavalry regiments or troops didn't have any communication they everything was done by either messenger or bugler they had usually three buglers to the troop Then uh, along come World War II and the cavalry expanded out to three squadrons to the regiment, but they still, uh, then they went from two troops to a squadron to, to three troops to a squadron. In other words, they added the C troop, A, B, and C, and then uh, uh, E, F, and G, and uh, K, L, and M, and then of course their headquarters and their service uh, troops. So uh, a regiment of cavalry during World War II was uh, roughly, just I say roughly, the same strength as a, an infantry regiment. With uh, instead of three battalions, they had three squadrons. Then in the in the artillery, they <coughs> said the they had the the regiment, and uh, the 82nd Field Artillery was uh, a regiment. But in 1940, they done away with all regiments and turned everything into battalions. So any of the regiments that had uh, more than one battalion, uh, the first, uh, the second, and third battalions of the regiment was redesignated to uh, a different number. So the I was in the 2nd Battalion of the 82nd Field Artillery Regiment and Headquarters and Headquarters 2nd Battalion Combat ba Train Battery and uh, this, the entire 2nd Battalion changed to this was redesignated to the 61st Field Artillery Battalion. Of course the old First battalion, it retained the number of the 82nd, and uh, then in in uh, each new unit was authorized to have five batteries, which was uh, an A battery, B battery, C battery, headquarters, and a service battery. Well, the in the second battalion of the 82nd, D battery would become A battery, the 61st, E battery would become B battery of the 61st, and they organized a, a C battery. Then headquarters, uh, uh, second battalion headquarters, become headquarters battery of the 61st, and the combat train and of the headquarters battery become the service battery. So that's the way the uh, the, the present that's up to right up to this date they still use the same concept. Then uh, the the United States had a, a big decision to make. They, uh, uh, and in fact, they almost went to World War II with their basic gun as the 75 millimeter gun. But uh, for some reason or another, the, uh, the 75 uh, was kind of losing its popularity because the Germans was going to the 105, which was a uh, about a 
15 pound heavier shell and it had uh, a bigger uh, powder charge and had more range and it was just a more effective gun. So uh, the, the Americans got uh, busy in a hurry and started uh, manufacturing 105s. Now the uh, along about uh, December of no, about December of uh, or January of 41 the uh, Six, the 1st Cavalry Division only had two artillery battalions. That was the 61st and the 82nd. And uh, so they decided they needed a, a, another, or was authorized to have another battalion of artillery. So they organized a, a new battalion, and it designated it the 62nd Field Artillery Battalion. And it was made up of mostly cadrymen from the 61st and 82nd, which uh, all those guys that went over there then were made, 99% of them was made non-commissioned officers, and, and then they filled the battalion up with draftees. Well, they was first issued the old uh, American 75s, and uh, as soon as they become available, well, they drew the 105 split trail uh, M1A1 howitzers. 105 howitzers. Well, uh, along about uh, April of 1942, or right about the early 42, they uh, was getting this task force together to go to the desert, and uh, it was being trained under George Patton out in California. So the uh, 62nd was one of the units that was chosen to go out there, and uh, of course they went and taken their 105 howitzers along with them. And, uh, of course, after they'd got out into the desert a while and, and uh, they were moved around and it was moved to Camp A.P. Hill, Virginia in, in uh, September of 1942. And up there, they, they well, they didn't even take the, the 105. They'd taken the 105 split trail houses with them, but they were never even unloaded off the flat cars when we got there. They had some a brand new thing that none of us had never seen before. It was a, a full track, a self-propelled gun with a 105 howitzer in it. It was actually a M4 tank with a without a turret on it and a, and a 105 howitzer sitting in its place. And uh, we become a, a, a armored field artillery and then set up four sections, four guns to the battery. They added two more guns, which all our armored, armored artillery was uh, six gun batteries. But uh, the, to fill the vacancy that the was left by the 62nd when they left the 1st Cavalry Division, uh, they had a, a unit that had come down from Chicago area around the uh, Fort Sheridan, I think, or somewhere up in there in Illinois. They had come down to uh, Doniana, New Mexico, and was doing extens extended uh, duty down there in the firing range. Well, they were a pack, mule pack unit, and had uh, mules and 75 millimeter pack howitzers, the same things that the 61st and 82nd had, and uh, only they packed them on mules, and they come in and taken the 62nd's place at Fort Bliss, and it was the 99th field artillery, and uh, they were one of the, the few units that went the entire World War II with 75 millimeter guns. Of course, they were well suited for those islands over there, and, and I understand they did uh, very well with them. Then when they got out to the islands, they or out to, to uh, Australia, they uh, pulled cadrymen from all three of these battalions and formed a, uh, a, one or, or a 155 howitzer uh, unit and it was called the 271st Field Artillery, and that was the four battalions in that comprised the 1st Cavalry Division Artillery was the uh, 61st, 82nd, 99th, and 271st. <clears throat> the uh, 62nd went on then to, uh, uh, from uh, Camp 
Young, California. They went to A.P. Hill, Virginia, and then to Camp Kilmer, New Jersey, then to Staten Island, New York. And that's where we sailed out. And, uh, of course, when we landed over in uh, uh, French Morocco at uh, Fidela, North Africa, uh, we landed as infantry because our guns were in the hold of the ship, and, and uh, we didn't see them for a couple of weeks after they got them uh, unloaded and, and uh, cleaned up and uh, waterproofed, uh, dewaterproofed, and uh, everything. And then we got them up in, uh, in uh, just in time to go up into uh, Tunisia and make the Tunisian uh, campaign with attached to the First Infantry Division. But uh, that's uh, roughly the, uh, or basically the the, the uh, organization and equipment uh, that was in the army before World War II. Uh, it was a kind of a stripped down army, and I think uh, there was only. If I remember right, somebody had told me there's 270,000 men in, in in the Army at the time Pearl Harbor was uh, uh, done, at the time that they bombed Pearl Harbor, that the American Army only had 270,000 men. Of course, they, uh, they speeded that up quite <laughs> quite uh, quickly after after that, though. But uh, it was a good life. The, uh, the uh, especially on the border, we had uh, it was a semi-tropic area, and we had uh, drill started at 7:30 in the morning. Or your either horse, horse exercise that was in the summertime, or your drill, and uh, then we quit at 11:30 in the morning. Then you were free until uh, 7.30 the next morning, which was a, a, a semi-tropic zone, and every tropic zone, the evenings were set aside for rest. But, of course, the guys could, uh, uh, in horse outfits, you didn't get that much rest because they, everybody was in barracks sleeping at, or fooling around the barracks at 4 o'clock. <coughs> the uh, non-commissioned officer in charge of quarters would... Uh, uh, round everybody up at 4 o'clock, 4 to 4.30, and we had water call, which was, we uh, had to go up and water and feed the horses. And, and uh, so most of the guys, it, it kind of watched their watches, and, and just before 4 o'clock, they would either uh, ease out to the PX or the library, or they'd get away from the, the barracks. And, and it was the poor guys that was laying there sleeping, the usually one had to do all the extra work of water call. That was uh, basically about all we had uh, uh, in the, in, then the, the infantry did have, we had one advantage over the infantry, and that was uh, we wore boots, lace-up boots, and they wore wrap blankets, or I think they call them puttees, I, but they were uh, a, a OD type blanket uh, made out of wool cloth. I've, I've seen them in and tried to wrap them, and, and I, I tell you, I'd rather have the boot. It was a, it was a lot more uh, practical. <laughs> uh, then, of course, uh, when long come the war, and then they done away the horse outfits, and, and they went just like the motorized artillery. Everything was uh, uh, canvas wagons, and the infantry went to canvas wagons, and everything was slacks. They did away with the boots and breeches. The campaign hats. He went to a little overseas cap, and uh, our steel helmet. Usually, we left and went to California. We hadn't been out there but a couple of weeks, and they issued the new. Uh, we had the old flat helmet, like the British type, uh, like a, a washbowl type helmet, and they issued the new helmet with a come down over your ears and the back of your neck. One week went to World War II in, and it had a, a helmet liner inside it, which at that time was a uh, kind of a cork uh, liner, and it was uh, similar to, I imagine, the pith helmet that the British wore out in the desert, 
and uh, then even when we got up to uh, Virginia, uh, and they give us all, or got up to Staten Island, to Camp Kilmer, they give us all new equipment. By some of the guys still had the old uh, uh, fiber type helmet liner, and they done away with them and all them, and give us a little thin plastic helmet liners, which was really more practical too. <clears throat> they wasn't uh, all that good out there in the desert for uh, keeping the sun off because it still got hot. And uh, then we wore a, a, a hood uh, for a while there. We tried all kind of different equipment. We wore a, a what it was, a headband that, that went around the, the your forehead and, and to the back. It was about an inch thick or inch wide and uh, it was wool and it, at the back of it it formed into a uh, well I don't know what they call them but it was like a like the French Foreign Legion used it was a, a a section that went down the back of your neck and that was supposed to keep you cool and then we had a uh, about a, a six or eight inch width uh, strip of cloth which had little hooks like a like a, a nice bandage has that hooked together and you'd wrap that twice.